Good evening and welcome to Sudbury Baptist Church Watch Night Service. We're going to be saying goodbye to 2023 and we're going to be saying hello to 2024. And we've got some contributions from uh, different members of the church, some musical contributions, some spoken contributions. And we want to pray that God will be with us as we uh, indeed say goodbye to what's gone before. But look ahead with faith to what is coming. Let's pray, shall we? Lord Jesus, we thank you for this last year. Lord, we know that you've been with us at all times. Lord, we may well have been through difficult times. Maybe there's been struggles. Maybe there's been challenges. But Lord Jesus, we know that you never leave us. You never forsake us. Maybe there are things that we've done that we uh, regret. Lord, we thank you that New Year is, a, is an opportunity to put things behind us and to begin again and to look forward with faith to the year ahead. So, Lord, as we come now to worship, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would meet with us in this short time that we share together. Amen. Amen.
Hello. For those of you who do not know me, I am Howard McFarlane. I wish to call this Reflection 2023. It has been a year where people have lost loved ones, where people have welcomed new additions to their families, where people have celebrated birthdays and achievements. There have been highs and lows. For all these, we give our Lord Jesus honor and praise. I will read Psalm 100, a psalm for giving grateful praise. Shout for joy to the Lord on the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Thanks be to God. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Happy New Year. 2023 was the year in which I celebrated my 60th birthday. One of my presents was by far and away the best thing I could have wished for. It was the birth of my first grandchild. A few weeks before my big day, Isaiah David Mpanga was born to my son George and to his wife Sandra. I never asked the parents the reasons why they chose those particular names for their son, but by divine plan, the two names, Isaiah and David, have come to have a profound impact on my walk with the Lord during this year. For the first time ever, I came to appreciate the importance of speaking the word of God, not just reading it silently or meditating over it, but actually vocalizing it. The scripture that opened my eyes to this truth came from that well-known scripture given to us by the prophet Isaiah, which I will read briefly. My word shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. What this says to me is that we need to put the word of God out there by speaking it over situations in our lives that require divine intervention. So we receive the word, we learn it, we believe it, we speak it. Once we do that, God in his faithfulness will watch over it to make it perform. So that was Isaiah's part in my newfound wisdom. What about David? Well, the Psalms of David provide us with powerful ways of expressing our needs to God. They are ready-made scriptures that we can speak over various needs and then sit back and wait for the Lord to bring the proclamation to fruition. And on that note, I'd like to, to proclaim a personalized version of Isaiah 54, which I hope to share with you. No weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that arises against us in judgment, we do condemn. This is our heritage as servants of the Lord. And our righteousness is from you, O Lord of hosts. If there are those who have been speaking or praying against us or seeking to harm us or who have rejected us, we forgive them. Having forgiven them, we bless them in the name of the Lord. 
Now we declare, O oh Lord, that you and you alone are our God. And beside you, there is no other. A just God, a Savior, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And we worship you. We submit ourselves afresh to you today in unreserved obedience. Having submitted to you, Lord, we do as your word directs. Thank you very much. Have a happy new year. Bye.
just going to have a moment of reflection just to think about this last year and um, I'm just going to ask Jesus to show us if there's anything that uh, we need to, to leave behind. Uh, there are things that we've done which have hindered our relationship with Christ to leave them behind and to ask for his strength and his grace to move forward. Maybe there are anxieties as we think about the future. And uh, so perhaps this time is a time when you just need to come to Jesus and ask him for his strength and his wisdom uh, for what's going to happen. So let's just, let's just have a moment's quiet, shall we? Reflection. Lord, you've heard the prayers of your people. Lord, I pray for those who feel that they failed in the year that's gone by. They feel they've let you down. I pray that they might know your forgiveness and you might give them a fresh determination to move ahead, to move on with you in this year that lies ahead. I pray for those who are sad, those who who are sorrowful, those who are grieving, I pray that you would join in. You would be their strength and be their comfort. Amen. Well, Christmas is well and truly over now. Um, in the lead up to Christmas, we were looking at the book of Isaiah and looking at the amazing prophecies embedded in chapters 6 to 12. Uh, there's actually three major prophecies in that uh, passage about Jesus, um, and we, but we only got to look at the first two. And so I wanted just very briefly tonight to uh, think about the, the final one. Um, so uh, in case you've forgotten what they were, chapter 7 was about the virgin birth. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and then we'll call his name Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And then we looked at chapter 9, um, which uh, began with the people walking in darkness have seen a great light, and uh, and that light was shining out of this person um, that was going to come, and he was going to be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Well, the final uh prophecy is in uh, chapter 11 and I'm going to read um, a, a big chunk from chapter 11 and then just just share a few thoughts on that and it says this a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse from his roots a branch will bear fruit the spirit of the Lord will rest on him the spirit of wisdom and of understanding the spirit of counsel and of might the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness, he will judge the needy. With justice, he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will lie with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and the little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. 
some very familiar words to many of us and we will be thinking about uh, some of those verses tonight. But before I get into that, I want to ask, well, what has this last year been like for you? Maybe it was a very positive year. Maybe you feel you made a lot of progress. Uh, maybe good things happened uh, in your life. Um, we give thanks to the Lord, don't we, for the good things. Or maybe it's been a difficult year for you. For us as a family, um, it's been very tough. Uh, Kathy's mum's health has been deteriorating in the latter half of this year. And on the 11th of December, um, she uh, passed away and went to be with the Lord. And so for us, Christmas um, has been overshadowed by this. Um, we've been celebrating the birth of Jesus and it's been wonderful to uh, have the grandchildren around and see them enjoying the fun. But there's also been this kind of mixed uh, feeling for us. And so we're going to be beginning 2024 um with a funeral for for uh, Kathy's mum, for my mother-in-law. You know, it's times like this, times when it's difficult that we need to dig deep into God. And these words from Isaiah uh, have been speaking to me in a fresh way in the light of the passing uh, of my mother-in-law. So look at how Isaiah begins this passage. He says, a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. Um, we saw that stump in Isaiah 6. Um, if you remember, when Isaiah was called to be a prophet, he was told that he was going to go out and preach to a nation that wasn't going to listen. And Israel was going to go into exile and Judah was going to go into exile. And there was just going to be a remnant, a stump left. When Christ was born, even though David's uh, dynasty was still in existence, it had been without real power for nearly 600 years. Herod the king was a, a puppet of Rome. And he was hated by the people and he was very weak. So God's promises were met. They came to a people who were at their weakest. You know, God is with us in the times of victory, in the positive times, when life is easy and when we feel good. But he's also with us in the difficult times, in the lows, in the disappointments, in the griefs and sorrows that life can sometimes bring. And he comes to bring us encouragement. So this promise of the Messiah um, was a promise of, of hope to a people who had lost hope. Um, we've seen uh, before Christmas how Isaiah was building up that profile, as I mentioned earlier, the virgin birth in chapter 7. Chapter 9 was the wonderful counsellor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. Um, and uh, I was saying when, when we looked at that word, wonderful counsellor, it's about supernatural wisdom. Where does this wisdom and power that the Messiah has come from? Well, as we've just read, uh, in verse 2, the spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might. The spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. The promised shoot, the one who would come from the stump of Jesse, the one who is truly human, uh, will also be characterised by the, having the very breath of God about him. Spirit uh, can also be translated breath. Everything about the Messiah will testify to his supernatural endowment for his calling. He truly is Emmanuel, God with us. When you give your life to Jesus, the Bible tells us that he gives us a measure of his spirit. And we are connected by the Spirit to the one who has the full measure of God's Spirit. Uh, Paul says at one point, he says, we have the mind of Christ. We're, we're, we're connected to him. We are in Christ. And uh, what it means is that uh, we do not go through uh, life alone in our own strength. You know, as we face this next year ahead, we might be anxious, we might be troubled, 
we might be fearful, we might feel inadequate for the journey, but Jesus gives us the strength and the wisdom that we need for that journey. Uh, we might not feel in advance that we've got it, but at the time when we call upon him, he equips us. Um, I mean, there's just so much more that we could say about this wonderful section of Isaiah. It's about hope. It's about saying you're not alone. You're not doing this by yourself. It's hope for the present, but it's also hope for the future. This Jesus who came into the world as a baby is returning one day as a glorious king. He's coming to root out evil and bring in everlasting righteousness. The world will be utterly transformed. You know, when we think about our own personal challenges, it's not just that which could cause us anxiety. But when we look around at the world, there's so much happening that could cause us to fear. And we could worry about where it's all heading. But Isaiah shows us that the, the world does not end in nuclear catastrophe or ecological meltdown, but it ends with the Messiah Jesus reigning in a restored and purified earth. And it will be global, it will be the whole earth. Listen to how Isaiah closes this little section that we've been looking at tonight. It says, The earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is our hope as Christians. We believe in Emmanuel, the one born of the Virgin. We believe in the wonderful counsellor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. We believe in the one on whom the fullness of God dwells and who is filled with the Spirit. And he tells us to focus upon him, that he will be with us in the year that lies ahead. So let's come to him, shall we, in prayer. Let's commit our way afresh to him. Let's pray, shall we? Lord Jesus, we leave behind 2023. Lord, we confess to you any failings that we've had in that year. We confess to you, Lord, those times when we haven't always walked with you as we should. And Lord, we thank you that we can begin a new year with a clean slate. We can begin afresh with you. And as we begin this year ahead, help us to fix our eyes afresh upon you, to enlarge our vision of you, and to know you as the one who is with us in every situation at all times. Lord, we worship you. We give you thanks. Amen.
Of a goodness of God.